Finding the right assets to fit your game can be very frustrating, especially for those people who make games as a hobby and don't exactly have a big budget to spend on the asset store. Because of this, the best solution sometimes is to make your own. In this video, I will show you how to make your own assets for your Unity game using Blender 2.8. Blender is a great modeling software and it is 100% free. The downside is that it looks pretty intimidating and getting started can be extremely difficult. I'm not going to go over everything that Blender has to offer, but I will explain the basics of what you'll need to know to get started to bring your creations to life. To download Blender, just go to their website, blender.org, and you can get it and download it there for free. I'll have a link in the description. Remember, you can always download the finished product on my website, mwesterstudios.com. There you can also track the team's current progress on our new open world RPG project. In this tutorial, I will be explaining and showing you how to create a old fashioned vintage television set like this using the Blender program to create your own assets and put them into your own projects. Okay, so now that we're in Blender, we have our opening basic scene here with our camera, our cube, and our light source. Now every time you create a new Blender project, this scene will appear and to navigate is a little different from in Unity. We can press down the scroll button to rotate our camera and by pressing shift together with that, we can slide our camera as well. We can zoom by using the scroll and to select an object, we can press the left mouse button. To delete an object, we select it first, then we press X and press delete. To create an object, we hold shift and press A Go to Mesh, and here are the different objects we can create. Now we'll be using a cube for this tutorial. So once we want to actually edit our cube, we can't do that quite yet. We first need to enter Edit Mode. We're currently in Object Mode, as you can see right here. To switch between this, we can either use this drop-down menu to go to our Edit Mode, or we can press Tab once we have selected our object. So every object in Blender is made up of faces and vertices. It's very important to remember that the more faces we have, or polygons, the heavier it's going to be on our Unity project. It's also important to know that in Blender, our object is made up of these faces, and our faces can be seen on both sides. That is not actually the case in Unity. As you see here in Blender, we're inside of our cube. But in Unity, our faces will only show up on one side. The other side will be invisible. And so we need to keep that in mind. To check this every, now off, every so often, we want to go up here, use this little drop down menu, and we can show our face orientation. Now, if it's blue, the blue side is the side that is going to show up. And if we come in, the red side is the side that will not show up inside of our Unity project. So we need to keep that in mind as well. But let's go ahead and turn that off for now. Okay, so by using the number pad, we can also change our viewport as well. Five will open up our orthographic view uh, where there is no perspective, and by pressing it again, we'll return to perspective. By pressing 1, that will bring us to the front-facing view. By pressing 3, our side view. By 7, our top view. And if you want to see the opposite, you just press uh, shift and then that number. So shift 1 is our back view, shift 3 our other side, and shift 7 our bottom. Let's go ahead and go back to our front view. We're going to select all of our faces, and we are in face mode, by the way, up here. You can change between line mode by selecting a full line. By pressing G, we can freely move it around. To cancel, you press right click. Okay, so we can go to vertex mode, face mode, which is what we want right now. By pressing A, we'll select all of it. And we're going to scale it just a little bit along its X axis. So to do this, we're going to, after having selected all of our faces, press S for scale, and then press X to only scale it along the X axis. And now we can use our mouse to kind of position it to where we want it. That should be fine right there. Okay, now let's return to our front view by pressing one. We're gonna click on this front face to select it alone. And now we're going to press E to extrude. Now what E does, is to show you what it does is it does it extrudes it so it creates a new set of faces and you can use your mouse to position it wherever you want in this case we're going to press right click which didn't quite cancel it yet but it did move it back to the same position so you can't tell but there are actually a new set of faces there and to position it to where we want it we're going to scale it down ever so slightly by pressing s and then bringing it down as you can see this created a new set of different faces along 
this side of our cube, which is perfect in what we wanted exactly. So let's press 1 to go back into our front view, and we're going to scale this to exactly where we want it to be. So pressing S again, we're going to scale it up ever so slightly, and right there should be fine. Although I don't want this to be centered, I actually want it to be slightly off to our, off to our left. So I'm going to come over here to the left side and press our move item on the toolbar, and we're going to slide it over here. Okay, now I don't want it to just be flat, because if we exit edit mode, you can't even see the face at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually extrude inward ever so slightly as well. So we're going to have our face selected here, and press E once more, and bring it in this way. Perfect. So now you can see that you can clearly see our indent once we're outside of edit mode in object mode. The problem is that most televisions that are vintage do not actually have a flat screen, they had a slight curve to it. So let's go ahead and do this right now. We're going to select our face that's on the inside right here. We're going to press E once more. We're going to right click and then scale it again by pressing S and scale it down just a little bit. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our top view and we need to switch to a point where we can see this. And right now we can't see it because this face is blocking it. To fix this, we're going to press Z. You can see that this, this brings up our menu to switch between our viewports. Now, for this example, we need wireframe. So now we can see exactly where that face is. And we're going to slide it just along its Y axis a little bit, bringing it out. And that should be fine. And we're actually going to go ahead and do this once more to give it a, slight more, a slightly more defined curve. We're going to press E again, right click, scale it down just a little bit. Go back to our top view and bring it out ever so slightly as such. Perfect. So now if we return to our solid view and exit edit mode, you can see that now we have a slight curve. Although we can very clearly see the faces and where the shadows start and stop. And we don't really want that because on a screen, it, it doesn't show up like that. It's very smooth and very curved. So to fix this, we can do a few things. We can go to Object, come down to Shade Smooth. Although this won't give us exactly what we want either because it shows that it's smoothed every single edge. So we can't exactly see where certain edges start and stop. So we don't want that. Instead, let's return to Shade Flat. What we're going to do instead is enter Edit Mode. We're going to select, going first to our front viewport, we're going to use B to bring up our Grid Selection tool. And we're going to select all of our faces on the screen. Okay, so once we have those all selected, we're going to come over to our Mesh. We're going to come down to Shading. And we're going to say Smooth Faces. Now this will do the same effect, but only for our selected faces. So now if we exit edit mode and go back into object mode by pressing tab, you can see that it nicely smoothed our screen exactly to the way we wanted it to be. Okay, although we also need certain dials to select our channels and power and everything like that. So let's go ahead and create a new object for that. So to do that, we're going to press shift A, going to mesh, we're going to select our cylinder. Now you can see that that brought it directly into our scene, into the center. So let's go ahead and press our three for our side view. And we're going to move it out just a little bit. Okay. Now it's also very important to remember that we cannot scale an object without it being in edit mode, without compromising its scale in Unity. So we're going to enter edit mode first, and that will automatically select all of our faces on our cylinder. We're going to press S to scale it down ever so slightly and we're going to rotate it also. So to do that, we're going to press R and X to rotate it along its X axis and then type in nine zero for 90 degrees. You can see that that rotated it exactly to where we want it to be. Now we're going to just drag it over to the position that we want on our television and it's still a little too big. So we're going to scale it down again. And it's also very wide as well. We don't need it to be so large along its y-axis. So we're going to press S for scale and Y, which will strictly scale it along its Y. We'll bring it to something like that. That should be fine.
Okay, now that we have it where we want it, we also need one more. So let's go ahead and just press Shift D to duplicate it, right click to put it back in its original position, and drag it down ever so slightly. Perfect. By pressing Tab, we'll go back into our object mode. But one thing that's been worth noting is that you can see that our object origin is still over here. This origin is very important as that will become the object's pivot point in Unity. To fix it and to move our origin to our object, we can go to Object, Set Origin, and we have a couple of different options. In this case, we want to move our origin to the geometry of the object, which brings it to the center just like that. Now that is exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and add our antenna as well. So let's press Shift A again, create a new cube, go into edit mode, bring our cube up a little bit so we can get it out of the way of the television, go into our front view, and let's scale it down. Now let's scale it a little bit along its x-axis, and for this part we're going to go back into our wireframe by pressing Z and coming over to wireframe. Now we're also going to switch from face mode to vertex mode by clicking up here. Now by doing that, we can now select the individual vertices and by selecting with our B tool, our grid selection tool, we're going to select the top ones and we're going to scale the x-axis down, giving it a nice angle as such. Now let's go ahead and press A for selecting all of it and scale it a little bit longer along its x-axis. Okay, that's fine. Now let's go back into our solid mode and move this down on top of our television. Now, still while inside of our edit mode, we're going to press Shift A, and we're going to create a new cylinder. Now, whenever you do this inside of edit mode, it does still create the new object, but it is still part of the same object that you were editing. And so these are actually one object together. We're going to bring it up and we're going to scale it down, making it fairly skinny. We're going to now press S along its Z axis by pressing S, Z. Scale it up, and then scale the whole thing down to make it skinnier. S, Z again to make it taller, and that should be fine. Now, if we go into our front view by pressing one, we can see that antenna perfectly here. We're going to press R to rotate it along its Y axis, and we're going to do it about 20 degrees. That's perfect. We're going to slide it over for so slightly, bring it down, and now we're going to press Shift D to duplicate this antenna. Right click to put it back at its original position, press R along its Y axis, this time negative 40 degrees. And now it's the exact opposite and we'll bring it over to this side as well. That's perfect, so now we have our antenna by exiting edit mode and going back into object mode with tab, we can see that it looks very nice. That this is very clearly a television set, although it's all one color still. Now we can change this fairly easily by going, clicking on our object, selecting it, and coming onto our right hand side. You can see that we have another toolbar here with several different options. We're going to come down to the second to last with a sphere that says material properties. In this video, I'm not going to show you how to texture map an object, I will do that in a separate video afterwards, but by using materials, Unity is able to easily recognize which materials are what colors, and it's actually fairly simple to do a low poly style. So we're going to click new, and that will automatically create a new base material and assign it as well to our object, and we're going to call it TV Base Color. Okay, so our TV Base Color, by coming here, we can click on the, our color and select it from our color wheel. Let's say we want it to be a nice dark brown. So we're going to come over here to a slightly orange tint and change our light factor so that it's nice and brown. Although we don't actually see that taking effect at all on our object. The reason for this is that we're not in material preview mode. So we need to go into our Z menu. We were in solid menu. And so we, by switching to material preview, we can now see that our color has been applied. Okay, now we don't want our screen to also be the same color, so we're going to actually enter edit mode on our object. Go to our front view, use our B selection tool to select all of our faces. 
switching back to face selection mode. Once we have our screen selected, we can, we can click this plus symbol and add another material. We're going to call this one TV Screen. And now we're going to come down here to our items. And we don't actually want this to have any sort of a, a color to it. We just want it to be black. And to assign it, we press Assign. So now you can see our screen. Now it's not exactly how glass would behave. It's actually diffusing quite a bit our light reflection. So we don't actually want that. We want to come over here to our material. And we're going to change our roughness and lower that. By lowering it, you can see that we have created a glassy material in Blender. Okay, now we don't also we also do not want these front sides, these faces to be this brownish color as well. We actually want these to be say black. So let's go ahead and select everything, and to select multiple faces at once, we can click one, and by holding Shift, we can add another to our current selection. Okay, once we have our front faces selected, we're going to add another material as well by, plusing, by pressing the plus icon, adding a new material, TV front. And let's go ahead and just make this black, or maybe not even black, but a dark gray, assign it, and we're going to leave it the way it is. Okay, that is perfect. Now we still need to add materials for our buttons and for our antenna as well. To do this, I actually want to join our antenna and our buttons to be the same object as our television. To do this, we're going to select our antenna and then we're going to press shift and select our television. And now by pressing control J, we can join them together into one object. So now if we go into edit mode, we now have access to all of this because it's all one object. We're going to do the same thing with our dials here. We're going to select our dials, press shift and select our television, and then control J to join it all together. Now that automatically assigned our base wooden color to our antenna and our dials, but we don't actually want that. Instead, we're going to go into edit mode, make sure we're on face selection, and we're going to switch into wireframe. Going back to our front view, we're going to select our antenna, and we're going to change this to be our TV front material by selecting it here and then clicking assign. Now we can't see that quite yet in our uh, wireframe mode, but we'll see it in just a moment. Now let's go ahead and select our dials by going here, B, and selecting. Now one thing that's very important to notice is that we accidentally selected our other faces. In wireframe mode, this is quite common. To fix this, we'll leave wireframe mode, going back into material preview. We'll press shift, holding it down and select, pressing the left mouse button over the faces we want to deselect. Okay, so now that we have that selected, we need to assign it to a new color. We want it to be black, but not glossy black like our television screen. So we're going to create a new material for it. And we'll call this TV dials. And we'll change our face color to black and then assign. Perfect. Okay, that looks really good. Although it's still slightly glossy, I don't really want the dials to have any sort of reflection at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to up our roughness, making it into a solid matte color. Awesome. Okay, so that is actually it for our television. I think it's ready to go. And now we just need to export it into Unity. To do this, we're going to leave edit mode First, we need to save our project. So we'll come up to File, select Save As, and you can save it to any location you want here. I have a certain file here with all of my different projects, and we're going to call this Old TV. Press Enter to save, and now we want to export this somewhere. So we'll come to File, Export, and Unity can support several different types of models, although the best is FBX. So we're going to select FBX, and now we want to select a certain export file, the area that our television is going to go to. So again, I have a specific file for this, my model projects folder, oldtv.fbx, that's perfect. And here on the side, we can show exactly what we want to export. 
Now, by having all of these blue, that means they're all selected. We don't actually want our lamp or the camera to be exported with our object, so we're going to press Shift and deselect those two because Unity will recognize them as a light and a camera, and we just don't want that right now. We're going to go ahead and F export FBX. Okay, and that's actually all we need to do in Blender, so we can go ahead and close this and go into Unity. Okay, now that we have Unity open, we're going to bring in our exported object. So I have here my file that I exported it to. I have my old TV model. I'm going to select that and drag it into my Unity project. Doing so will import it perfectly. And we can see our object here. Now, if we go ahead and drag it into our scene, you can press F to focus on it. You can see that most of our materials were in fact imported nicely, although they didn't exactly come out the way we wanted them to. So I'm gonna just rotate it so that way it's in the sun a little bit. It's got the light coming down on it. You can see that our glossiness didn't show up at all. And in fact, our gray looks about the same as our black. So instead we're going to create a couple of new materials. We're going to create material. We're gonna call this our wood base. And again, we're just going to create our simple material to the way that we want it to be. Something like that's fine. I'm going to assign it to this material here, which automatically updated it. And I also don't want it to be so shiny, so instead I'm going to make it slightly less smooth, more of a matte color as well. We're going to create a new material as well for our screen, so TV screen. This one will be black. <coughs> This one will be black, and we're going to up the smoothness factor quite a bit and drop it onto our television. That looks nice. And now for our dials, we're going to create one more material. TV dials. And this one's just going to be slightly gray. And again, a matted color. And we're going to drag that on, and that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. There is our TV from Blender to Unity. That is how to create models and assets in Blender for your Unity game. Thanks for watching.